Today, I wanna to talk about four important things that you need to do before you buy any commercial investment property, and these four things can also be applied to residential investment properties. Hi, I'm Stephen, and I've bought and sold several commercial investment properties in various countries in the last seven years. And I've picked up a few things along the way that I'm hoping to share with you in today's video that can potentially help you avoid some costly mistakes. So I'm gonna be covering leases, planning, sales agents and the sellers and how these combine to enable you to make an informed decision about whether you want to be buying that commercial investment property or not. So first up we're going to be talking about leases. So the key thing about leases with commercial property is that we want to be looking at the term of that lease, the length of that lease, how long they're going to be staying in that property. So that's called a term and now that has a length of time. Normally it's multiple years. So this can range from anything from say a one year lease which isn't very good up to maybe a 25 year lease or even longer in some cases. Typical terms are like three years, five years or a 10 year lease. They're quite common and now you want to be looking at for that term and when that lease started. So it might be a 10 year lease but it started eight years ago, it's only got two years left to go. The remainder of that lease is now only two years even though it's a 10 year lease. So there's more of an increased risk with having a lease that's only got two years left on it from a 10 year term than a lease that has eight years left on it from a 10 year term. You know, you, one of those is better than the other because after two years, you're gonna have to find another tenant otherwise. So always look for that term and look for the date when that lease started. Other thing you wanna be checking on a lease is is it full repairing and insuring. So most leases always have full repairing and insuring leases written into them, which means that they're responsible for all maintenance and repairs buildings insurance and any other expenses concerned with the upkeep of the property. On the lease, you're also gonna be finding out things like whether there was a bond taken. Now this bond is basically the deposit, so the tenant will pay a certain amount of money up front as security for that lease, just like they would do in a residential lease, really. A commercial lease is normally a bit higher. This can be about several thousand pounds. VAT may also be applicable on that lease. What you wanna be finding out as part of the lease is, is the tenant paying VAT on their rent, which means then that the owner has actually opted in for tax, which means that VAT is applicable on the purchase of that property, as well as the tenant has to then pay VAT on the rent. But the way around VAT is to buy a property trading as a going concern in your company and that you have to have opted in for tax before you buy that property. Speak to a professional about how to go about doing that, but that's essentially what we've done when we bought VAT properties when a tenant's in situ and they're being charged VAT and the owner has opted in for tax. If you're getting some value, please remember to smash that like button. In the lease, you're also gonna find out how much rent they're gonna be paying, how often that's gonna be paid, and when the rent reviews are. So the rent is normally quarterly in advance, and there's rent reviews, depending on the length of the lease, these can be every few years or five years, whatever the term is, but these will be stipulated in that lease when the review's gonna be taking place. Now you might find that these rent reviews have not actually taken place and there's an opportunity with buying that property that you can go back and review that rent and see if it should be increased. And it might be that it's increased by market rent or it might be increased by CPI over the time of period that, that it's been owned. So you need to find that out and then there might be an opportunity that you can go and increase the rent based on a rent review that hasn't actually occurred for whatever reason. One of the most important things that you wanna be checking on a commercial lease is whether they're inside or outside the act. What this means is it's referring to the Landlord and Tenancies Act of 1954 and the sections 23 to 28 inside that 1954 act that talk about the security of tenure. Now this is all to do with whether the tenant has the right to go and rent that property once they've kind of gone beyond their agreed term. If they're inside the act, that means they can renew that lease and they can just stay inside that property at that agreed amount of rent forever, essentially. So what you wanna be doing is when you're looking for a commercial property and checking the lease, is seeing if it's outside that Security of Tenure 1954 Act sections 23 to 28. And they have to specifically say that they're outside the act. And they'll reference that inside the lease. Here's an example of a lease where they're stating that they're outside the 1954 act. So you can kind of get an idea of what you need to look for when you're checking out the lease. So the next important thing is planning. Planning comes into play because you wanna be checking 
what's the usage for that property, what's been permitted for that property. So you also wanna be identifying other potential uses for that property down the track. So commercial property has several usage classes that are assigned to it. This class system has changed in September 2020 where the majority of stuff have now been moved into class E, but the old class system is still valid until July 2021. But we wanna be checking the usage classes for commercial property because this enables us to determine what use the tenant can have in that property and also what potential opportunities there are to change that property in the future. So when I'm buying a property, I also wanna be looking at what the potential opportunities are for that property in the future. Whereas if you're just buying a property where there's nothing else to be done with it, it's just buy and hold, there's no further opportunities to change the use of that property and therefore improve the revenue or improve the value of that property, you might then go, well, I'll pick a different one that has more opportunities, it has more layers where those opportunities can be realized. So I try and pick properties that have got initially something like they've got a good income, they've got a good tenant, but there's also opportunities for some planning. And this kind of comes along with like permitted development rights. If you've got PD rights, it only takes you then 56 days for approval for that planning permission to change something from say commercial to residential as one permitted development right that a lot of retail properties have available to them right now, even in conservation areas. PD rights don't go to grade two listed buildings, so you kind of avoid those if you're looking for PD rights. Now when we're doing our due diligence on the planning, what we wanna be looking for is where that property is located, because then we wanna go and look at that local planning authority's website for that particular property in that location and find out, has that local planning authority put anything known as an Article 4 direction against any permitted development rights. Now you'll find Article 4 directions public available on local planning authorities websites and these will tell you things like whether you can convert a particular dwelling to a HMO for example or whether you can convert offices into residential. So there's Article 4 directions that, that will stop you from converting offices to residential and also stop you from converting residential properties into HMO, houses of multiple occupancy. A piece of software that enables me to do this very quickly so I don't have to keep going to loads of different local authority websites is Nimbus Maps. Now I'm gonna link to that below where if you sign up to Nimbus Maps, you get a free month and I get three months of extra use. There is a free version of Nimbus Maps which is quite good just for giving you like the title boundaries and things like that on the property but it doesn't give you access to the planning information. You have to be on a paid subscription to be able to get the planning data on Nimbus Maps. But it's a real time saving thing and if you're really gonna be looking at commercial property as an investment, I think it's worth the investment in the software to enable you to really quickly delve into this type of information quite quickly. The other benefit is that you can also see other planning approvals that have taken place nearby. So you can kind of get an idea then of what would be permitted for that property that you're looking at because it's been approved in nearby properties. So when we're looking at planning, we also wanna be looking at whether that property is in a flood zone. And this can be easily done by going to this website here, put in the address and then you'll see whether it's in a flood zone or not. Now this is an important consideration when you're going for mortgages because these impact what type of loans that you can get on property, especially if you wanna convert from commercial to residential. If it's in a flood zone, this is gonna potentially impact your ability to do that on the ground level. The next important thing that when you're first starting out, you might be a bit reluctant to do is actually ask direct questions to sales agents about the commercial property that you're trying to buy. What I find is if you ask questions to commercial agents, which are normally quantity surveyors, they're not the same as residential agents. You ask them a direct question, you get an open and honest response. They're not like residential estate agents where they're all a bit bluff, bluff, bluff. You know, you can't always get a straight answer out of them. Commercial agents, kind of a different kettle of fish. You can get some good information out of them as long as you word it the right way and you're kind of a bit more direct about it. So the types of questions you wanna be asking for is exactly how long has it been on the market? Now you wanna know this because you wanna determine if it's just been put on, it's unlikely that they're gonna take much of a reduced offer. But if it's been on there for a number of months now, then there's a good opportunity that you're gonna be able to get a better price than the one that they're asking for. You also wanna be looking for, has there been any price changes on that listing? And now you might not be able to find that from directly looking at the listing, but if you ask the agent, they're more than likely gonna say, yeah, we've reduced the price a month ago, we've reduced it by 10, 20 grand. That gives you an indication now that the seller's becoming a bit more motivated to try and sell that property. They've gone through that period where 
they were all excited, people have gone and seen it, they've not had any offers or they've had lower offers and they've rejected them. Which brings me on to the next point is that you wanna find out if they've had any offers been made on that particular property and find out what that offer was. I find that if you ask a direct question, more than likely they actually tell you, yes, we've had offers, but they've offered around this much money. They might not give exactly away the exact amount what it was, but you can put in some numbers there and say, was it around this number? Was it higher or lower than this? And they'll probably say yes or no, and therefore give you a good idea of where you want to be if you want to make an offer. But before you ever make an offer, you need to be making sure you know your numbers and really it's your numbers that tell you what offer you wanna be making, not the actual sales price. One of the things that I like to do is I always like to ask who has set the price. Now why I say this is because I wanna know if the seller has set the price or if the actual commercial sales agent has set the price because if the seller set the price, then I know that it's probably unrealistic. If the commercial agent has set the price, then it's probably a more realistic price based on, say, the tenancy and the square footage of that property and comparables in the market. The seller with a tenancy property will also put down what the income for that property is. Now, what you wanna be finding out is, is that actual income or is that a pro forma income? Now, pro forma means that it's basically potential. And what you wanna be looking for is the actual income, not the potential, because the potential is your opportunity to improve that property, but you wanna be buying that property based on what it is actually generating today, because that is what dictates the price for that property. When speaking to the agent, you also wanna be making sure you can get a copy of the title, and you also wanna be finding out who owns that property. Is it a company? What's the company name? Is it an individual? What's the individual's name? The reason why you wanna be finding this is because if it's a company, you can go and look up that company, and you can go and find out what other properties they might own, who are the directors of the company? How old are those directors? So Nimbus Maps also has company information that's available once you've searched for that property. So in Nimbus Maps, you can do a search for that property and it will tell you who the owner of that property is. It also tells you whether they've sold any other properties in the last 18 months. What you might find is that that one company owns several properties and they might be selling several properties off and this information can be quite interesting because it might mean that that company is selling off lots of different assets that they now own for one reason or another. Now this can also give you the opportunity to go direct to that company and ask them if they wanna sell any of their other properties and you can find out which properties they own through Nimbus Maps as well through a simple search. So the owner information is very important to find out when you're looking at commercial property because this is gonna give you good insights into why they're selling and you know, whether they're gonna be flexible on maybe their price or not. So you can go and get the information, as I said before, from the agent, also get this information from Nimbus Maps. So once I've got this information, I like to go into company's house and do a look up on that company and go and find out some more information about the company. So how's it structured? How many directors are there? Who's a secretary? Where's their headquarters? Where are they working from? So you can also go inside and look at their annual reports and look at what their turnover was, their sales revenue, what profit they're making. This information is all for free, available on company's house, which I'm gonna to link to below as well. I like to check this information because it builds a picture in my mind about the owner, the seller, why they might be potentially selling. I've also asked the agent about why they're selling. You're not always necessarily going to get a great answer there, but they might give you a bit of information like they just won't get, get rid of the property, they've reached a certain age, now they don't want any more responsibilities. Now that's something I've come across and you can then kind of get that backed up by looking at Nimbus Maps and it will tell you that they own 10 properties and they've sold six of those properties in the last 18 months, which then kind of validates what you might have got from the agent that, yeah, they are wanting to sell their properties now. You can go and look on company's house and see that the, the director is 72 years old. He's had enough. He just wants to cash out of all of his properties now and reinvest it into something less... <laughs> less responsible. A good website that I've come across is called Endol. Now this website enables you to go and put in the information about that company and it's gonna give you all sorts of information regarding their sales revenue, their turnover, their profit, the number of employees, and it's all free access. You can also get a credit report if you upgrade and pay a bit of money, but I'm giving you just free information that you can kind of see at a quick glance. Here's a quick example of one of Costa Coffee where you can see that they're incorporated on the 28th of July, 1976. They're a large size company, 250 employees, 50 million pounds in turnover. They're classified as production of coffee and coffee substitutes. They've got total liability of 257 million. They've got nearly 60 million cash in the bank. They've got a turnover of 1.3 billion pounds. And they've got total assets of 785 pounds. 
their net assets, you can see their employees, and their debt ratio. Now this is all free, so this is quite some good due diligence that you can do based on the owner, on the lease, before you actually go and inspect that property. So before you inspect a property, all of these four things come into play to determine whether you wanna move forward and go and arrange a time to inspect that property, and then also whether you wanna then go and make an offer on that property. Now, no matter what that property is, every property is worth something. So one of the mantras that I like to go by is if you're not making offers, you're not making money which I'm gonna cover in another video another time, but you also wanna be working out what value that property is worth to you and make an offer, doesn't matter. You can make an offer, get rejected, doesn't matter, but that's what that property is worth to you. If you can get at that price, you see these potential opportunities, these upsides in it, so don't be afraid to make offers. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe if you haven't already and smash the like button. So if you wanna keep the conversation going, we've got a free property investing Facebook group that I'm gonna link below. Feel free to join that and join us in there. Thanks so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you wanna follow me on Instagram and see what I'm up to there, feel free to do that and I'll see you next time.